Hello, Dan Adilkowski here from howtomechatronics.com. In this Arduino tutorial, we will learn how to control 8x8 LED matrix using the MAX7219 driver and the Arduino board. We will make three examples. With the first one, we will explain the basic working principle of the module. In the second example, we will see how the scrolling text on the 8x8 LED matrix works. And in the third example, we will control them via Bluetooth and a custom-built Android application. Now let's take a closer look at the MAX7219 driver. The IC is capable of driving 64 individual LEDs while using only 3 wires for communication with the Arduino. And what's more, we can daisy chain multiple drivers and matrices and still using the same 3 wires. The 64 LEDs are driven by the 16 output pins of the IC. The question now is how is that possible? Well, the maximum number of LEDs light up at the same time is actually 8. The LEDs are arranged as 8x8 eight eight set of rows and columns. So, the MAX7219 activates each column for a very short period of time and at the same time it drives each row. So, by rapidly switching through the columns and rows, the human eye will only notice a continuous light. Note how the pins of a common 8x8 alien matrix are internally arranged, so if you are building a matrix on your own, you should consider it. Also note, a common breakout board for the MAX7219 comes with a resistor between the 5V and the IC pin number 18. The resistor is used for setting the brightness or the current flow to the LEDs. The following table from the datasheet of the IC shows the value of the resistor that we should use according to the forward voltage drop of our LEDs. Now let's connect the 8x8 LED matrix module to the Arduino board. Here's the circuit schematic. The VCC and the ground of the module go to the 5V and the ground pin of the Arduino and the three other pins, data input, clock and load or chip select, go to any digital pin of the Arduino board. If we want to connect more than one module, we just connect the output pins of the previous breakout board to the input pins of the new module. Actually, these pins are all the same except that the data output pin of the previous board goes to the data input pin of the new board. Once we connect the modules, we are ready to take a look at the Arduino code of the first example. We will use the Max Matrix library, which can be downloaded from GitHub, and the links to it are provided on the website article. So, first we need to include the Max Matrix library, define the pins to which the module is connected, set how many modules we use, and define the Max Matrix object. For displaying characters, we need to define them in an array of characters or bytes and here I have several examples. We can notice how the bits are forming the characters, which are actually zeros and ones. In this case, they are rotated 90 degrees, but the library examples suggest to use them in such a way so that it would be easier later to implement the shift left custom function for scrolling the text. In the setup section, we just need to initialize the module and set the brightness of the LEDs. In the loop section, using the set dot function, we can set any individual LED to light up at X, Y or row column position and using the clear function, we can clear the display. For displaying the predefined characters, we use the write sprite function and the first two arguments are the X and Y position of the upper left corner of the character. At the end, using the shift left function, we move or scroll the character to the left. Next, let's take a look at the scrolling text example and see what's different. Here we have to include an additional library for the progman, which is a variable modifier and it's used for storing data into the flash memory instead of the SRAM. When we have a larger database of variables which are static, like in this case defining letters and characters, it's better to store them in a flash memory because it's much bigger, 32 kilobytes compared to the 2 kilobytes of the SRAM. Next, with a character array, we define the scrolling text and in the loop section, the custom function print string with shift 
prints the scrolling text on the LED matrix with the scrolling speed defined in milliseconds with the second argument. The first thing that this custom function do is that it extracts the characters from the text string and then displays these scrolling characters on the LED matrix. So, once we learned how the Max7219 works, now we can make the third example, which is a practical Arduino project where we will build a custom Android app to control the LED matrix via Bluetooth communication. Before we continue, I would like to suggest you to check my detailed tutorials on how to use the HC05 Bluetooth module and how to build a custom Android app using the MIT App Inventor online application. Here's the Arduino code and now let's see the modifications. First we need to include the software.serial library which will enable the Bluetooth communication and define some variables needed for the program. In the setup section we need to initialize the Bluetooth at its default baud rate of 38400 bits per second. I set the initial text message to be howtomechatronics.com with 100 milliseconds delay scrolling speed. Next, using the bluetooth.available function, we check whether there is incoming data from the serial port and if that's true, using the bluetooth.read function, we start reading the serial port, one byte each iteration. So the first incoming byte will be always stored in the indicator variable and according to it, choose whether we will change the text message, the scrolling speed or the brightness of the LED matrix. If we take a look at the Android app code blocks, we can notice that when the send button is clicked, first we send the indication byte, in this case 1, which means we want to change the text message. In order to do that, at the Arduino side, we will first clear the whole character array and also clear the LED matrix display. Then, in the while loop, we will read the rest of the data in the serial port and that's the message typed in the text box of the Android app. In case the indicator variable is 2, that means we have changed the position of the scrolling speed slider, so we will read its new value using the bluetooth.readString function and adjust the scrolling speed. In the same way, we adjust the brightness of the LEDs. So that's pretty much everything for this tutorial, but you can always find more details and uh, source codes on the website article. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching and for more tutorials and projects, visit howtomechatronics.com.